Okay, I would uh, like to dispense with the applause between poems because I have a lot that I want to read, so I want to really stuff your ears. Um, I'm not writing about one theme, I'm sort of mixing it up with a lot of different items. So, serious, humorous, autobiographical. So, first poem. If, if I could have saved a soldier on Iwo Jima, or a couple of soldiers on D-Day whose innocence ended in death, if I could have rescued a child from the Hiroshima terror, or one from Mekong Napalm, if I could have taken the pills from Maryland, or snatched the car keys from James Dean, if I could have changed Bull Connor's batons to toilet paper, pulled the teeth from his dogs. If I could have made Hitler sane and Stalin less paranoid. If I could have made my father more secure and plugged my mother's bleeding heart. If I had been more diligent, if only. Very short poem, but a very deep poem called The Meaning of Life. I throw the ball the dog chases it down and snatches it into her mouth, then runs in circles around the yard, her prize squeaking irregularly. The ball is dropped and we start again. Safety of repetition, tyranny of the familiar. Idle. I dream my father hectors and intimidates witnesses. I dream his methods are not ethical, for he is desperate to win every case. I dream he knows his weakness, but cannot change his style. I dream his need for respectability is a disease without a cure. I dream his fragile successes lead to his undoing. I dream his unspoiled generosity is less than it seems. I dream he loves me, but does not know how to love. Well, let's, let's read this other one. This is called, was Sisyphus. And I call it an interactive poem because at the end, I leave a, on the written page, I have a question which people, if they were saw this in a magazine or something, could answer at their leisure. So it's called, Was Sisyphus His Good Fairy, My Father? An energetic entrepreneur before the word became a cliché. After World War II, he opened a trade school for GIs, was part of a small group that manufactured TV tubes. The comforts of success always denied as he found new ways to poison relationships. He jumped at every opportunity, worked hard. Still, his dream of an ill-defined respectability remained unreachable. But two shots of B&B &B and he was a pixelated six-year-old, enjoying giggling innocence. The pivotal event I can only guess at. In his Eagle Scout uniform, riding as a decoy for his bootlegger father on delivery day. Achievement devalued. Self-esteem washed away in the pathology of bathtub gin. This is a poem about my mother called Last Hours. I leaned over to kiss you goodnight and you mouthed the word water. So I asked the doctor, who said no, he was going to run a test. I should have grabbed him by the collar, shaken him, thrown him to the ground, stomped on his bedside manner. A test. Fucking stupid doctor. A test for what? To see how near you were to the end? Fucking stupid doctor. With number 80 sandpaper sensitivity, go back to emptying bedpans. I acquiesced. In the late 70s, for five years, I worked at an institution for juvenile delinquents. 
uh, mostly it was a lot of hardcore, but some who were in there for really trifling offenses and were basically lost. So I wrote a series of poems recently about uh, the, the end of some of these boys, and it's called Rest in Peace. Top Cat, a self-picked name borrowed from a cartoon character, a name of false promise. Who could take you seriously? After discharged, I saw you at PGH, cuffed and with two police guards. You asked for a smoke, I gave you three. Profuse thanks. Six months later, found murdered in a car at Broaden, Ontario. A drug deal gone bad, according to the news. How quickly from top cat to bottom dog. Green pants. Another big one who likes to shadow box and impresses nobody with his moves. His name derived from money in the pocket. Claim to fame, a cousin, supposedly well known, who was killed by his mistreated girlfriend in an argument over drugs and a homosexual lover. Four brothers doing big time in Holmesburg is also something he is quite proud of. The clearest memory? A dispute with little Mike about who was first on the cottage with dental floss. I brought him some the next day, and he said, so that's what it is. How do you use it? Too soon after discharge, found lifeless in an alley, pants pockets empty. Pittsburgh Tide. The biggest, strongest, surliest at 18 plus. The YDC is an unearned gift as he has passed juvenile delinquent age. Could intimidate with the look. Not interested in making friends, content to count the days unexpectedly returned to Pittsburgh by court order. Freed, he reversed to his old money-making, taking days, holding up corner grocers and bodegas, until one senor surprised him with a shotgun and was first to pull the trigger. This relates, this is part of that series, it's called A Matter Of. Answer all questions. Hypothetical speculations are discarded as invalid. Only lived truths are acceptable. Have you ever been arrested? Done more than 24 hours in jail? Feared for your ass in a locked room or steamy shower when outnumbered by four or five to one? Been held up and felt afraid of the idiot on the other end of the gun? Or held someone up and known the fear of the trigger and the desperation of your actions. Known those whose fists are always tight inside their hearts, whose blood is trained on command. Are you familiar with those drowning in anger, rage, and frustration, who battle denial with a barrage of motherfuckers and bitches and live from the back of the hand to mouth? Some will learn to weep for others and cease the redundant mourning of their own deaths. Okay, a little humor. Find God's match for you. Join Christian Mingle to learn God's plan for you. For a small fee, they will re reel all, but no money back guarantee. Join handsome couples with close to Hollywood good looks, beaming with satisfaction. No chubbies, no wrinkles. God has smiled on them. This non-denominational ad, does it match Methodist with Methodist, Lutheran with Lutheran, or any Christian with any other Christian? Can the naive Jew boy join in hope of finding his Shiksa goddess? <laughs> what if by some small chance there is no match? Many dates yield nothing. Are you weirdly incompatible with thousands of women or have you been scorned by the God you trust and pray to for all the goodness in your life? What are your shortcomings, and how do you overcome them? Please, God, I am lonely and in need of quick answers. Okay, going to be that way.
I'm going to read three short poems. This happened to be on one page. But. Seeker. It's easy to be crazy, mumbling mystical drivel, shivering sometimes, sockless in the cold sun, light reflected off your winter eye, bumped aside in the heat of your contempt to cage quarters for soup, or what difference a dose of muscatel. 9 p.m. A solitary man walks slowly, shovel shoulder, looking for one more sidewalk to clear. The sign. A deer posed on hind legs, front tucked under, prepares to leap. A car going only 25 miles per hour easily fractures the promise of airborne grace. Okay, this is a long one. What next? I worry for my children who could live another 50, 60 years, and my grandchildren who could live a century, but the fields of peace and harmony are largely untilled by bottomless hates. I am concerned for the lovers of free market capitalism who stuff their ears with thousand dollar bills and, lo and those hoping to, to hitch a ride with other success, but sugar price sports supports are forever. And if there is no such thing as a free lunch, who pays? I fear for the underpaid African miners whose dreary lives can be ended on a whim by private corporate armies. And the Gulf of Mexico oil rig workers whose corporate managers skimp on safety equipment. Physical risks equal smaller rewards. I am concerned for the penthouse billionaires who savor on oncoming oligarchy and greater social stack stratification, a definition. Fascism, a system of government that exercises a dictatorship of the extreme right, typically through the merging of state and business leadership, together with belligerent nationalism, the American Heritage Dictionary. So it all comes together. I am concerned there will be more Supreme Court justices trapped inside their faith who do not read newspapers, that disturb their personal views, who will find arcane legal interpretations that defer to their religious inclinations. I question the business of higher education that has lost its focus, that football coaches are paid many millions and all American athletes enhance a school's reputation more than Nobel Prize winners, that grander buildings named after rich donors are of primary importance while inner-city schools scramble for pencils. I fear CO2 pollution, that Beijing air will turn skies permanently gray while lakes sour and oceans become burial grounds. We settle for spectacle over substance, see any Super Bowl halftime show. Positives of technology are degraded to evil intelligence. Hackers worship the ghost of Willie Sutton, who robbed banks because that was where the money was. I am sad that one third of my city relies on food stamps to feed so many poorly nourished children. But borrowing a billion for a stadium is as easy as a glass of water. The rise of the new barbarians, the conscienceless marauders who hide their mass cowardice, are quickly changing the game as a horrified world watches them kill and rape children and the old, or anyone who not, does not bow before them, Rising, raising an intransigent and merciless faith where one discovers the morbid thrill of the kill. Do I have any answers? Maybe a semi-serious one that most will shrug at and think me a fool. Let the makers of crossword puzzles lead the world. Think about how cleverly all the word blanks are logically filled three-letter, twelve-letter words or phrases that cross a whole line, horizontal or vertical. The puzzle makers are solvers, are solvers first. Their communication skills are enormous. They have great wit and it is easy to accept their dare because tomorrow the answers will be spelled out and another challenge presented. Think my positions and solution ridiculous? Well, now you can tell me why. I left some space for you to disagree, disparage, or just poke fun. Go ahead, blast away. If there's some thought, 
Maybe I am being simplistic and naive, that as yet there is no solution to deal with these God-made butchers. We are playing the ultimate game of whack-a-mole, and the moles are winning. No choice but to speed up our whacking. The challenge. The challenge of a 26-mile marathon or 90-mile swim from Cuba to the U.S., not enough. Snowboarding down a mountain, skydiving, too tame. The X Games, child's play. Time to move on to extreme sports. Physical challenges that put more lives at risk. Pointless exercises in the name of sport. I do appreciate the desire to participate, and I might watch a bit on TV. My extreme sport is simple. A deep breath before bed, and another upon waking. Uh, about almost two years ago, I was diagnosed with leukemia, and the wife, Ellen, and a friend, we tried to get to see a doctor at Penn who was maybe the foremost, certainly in Philadelphia, maybe in the country, in dealing with leukemia. It took many phone calls to get an appointment. We finally got one on a Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock and waited two and a half hours to see him. But this is the kind of doctor he was. So I wrote some poems in response to this. I call them all fragments. And I'm just going to read the third and the fourth one. Fragment three, remission. So many good wishes. One day at a time. New treatment methods every day. Hope's fire burns slowly. Ashes smother self-pity. Disease, an incurable kind, the ultimate cliché. My uncertain faith carries little weight. Doctor says results are spectacular. Warms my good blood. Sighs and smiles, spleen back to normal. The downside of remission, if any, the upside, years of treatment. Lethal cells. Tide is out. When to expect a new tide. Another triumph for Occam. From start to finish, less than three months. Am I to be considered a genetically modified organism? My response equals reassurance. Remissions, tentative, oasis. The months between next blood work and possible infusion. So, so long. After treatment. All the times I have saved by shaving every other day, refusing to put on socks in the coldest weather, now seems to be slipping away. The hiss of escape in my ear at night. Fritted away 50 years of afternoon naps. How does my speeding on the turnpike to get someplace five minutes early figure in? I remain vigilant, studying, counting my time back, knowing it is all subject to unanticipated disruption. Fragment four, what next? Ever burning, I hover, hover around your glow as we we weave through shadows. What if my guiding light is unexpectedly snuffed? Six month remission, usual blood work confirms. Doctor always energetic, Ellen diligent, takes notes. Only one line today. Slither, saunter, surge, what the right pace for my new life. The race to tomorrow, let it be a marathon, not a sprint. How to reignite solidarity with the future. The pulse of immortality has deserted. Let me bite off more than I can chew. Envy of others smothered by appreciation of the now. Life offers only one promise. Every eighth week a nervous tongue, taking nothing for granted. Death is not fickle, will kiss any eye shut. A freak accident, a more virulent disease, and I am left behind to struggle in the whirlpool of loss. Time grows new forms daily, the acutely lethal always a surprise. Two months now a magic number. Unrealistic expectations shell. It's corny, we walk always hand in hand. Time's unraveling, seldom precise. The future at best, an unreliable promise. 
My remission is strong. Ellen dreams of traveling. Paris, here we come. And I will read one more. Two, two, two more, I'm sorry. Um, This is an epigraph by Linda Paston. A married love is a territory more mysterious the more it is explored. Every night we molt new cells in the morning mirror, unrecognizable. Tentative conversation grows more comfortable with every word. Some days we are armor, some days feathers. On a weekend, basic skin. Yet we live on worrying air that can sour or sweeten every action. Hope is for a pleasant tension, an unexpected grin, a hand brushing gently against hair. There are sandpaper days and oatmeal days, sparkling water days and chainsaw days, never knowing when. And this poem is called Preobituary. I grieve for my father and mother, and now you. I am cut in half with two unsteady legs to forage my grief. No more. The front lights on as you come home from bridge. No more. There is no knowing someone by reading a newspaper obituary. Ritual demands order in a disorderly world. No more. So your small rituals evolved of saving presents, of a chart to plot bill paying deadlines a piece of paper with all passwords. No more. I still breathe the spirit of your encouragement, assume the burden of your generosity. I am sure every dog I see will carry a piece of your soul. No more. Imagining your presence, I will not be afraid to enter a dark room. I will carry your urn around the house. Maybe we will share bacon and eggs or morning coffee. Never again. Thank you.